Sag, welcome to your past life reading for couples. This is the life after the retrograde specials. I was supposed to complete this while I was traveling, but then I forgot the uh, adapter for my laptop, so I had to go back earlier. Um, I was at a healing meditation camp, and it was kind of refreshing and energizing. So, let's take a look. Are you really with the right one? Um, what is your past life karma? The things that you have to pay. The things that you owe from the past people that you'll be meeting. Why is it that there are some things in your life that just keeps on going over and over and over again? What are the things that still hanging from the past? And who is your soulmate? All right, looks like you've already met your soulmate and your um, twin flames. I don't know, actually. You have two soulmates, okay? One that you will be, um, one that you were married to and one that you've met while you're already married. Or during the time that you were still young, very young. Now, huh, huh, huh. you lack trust and faith in life, and you're always afraid of what's going to come next. You're always afraid of the unknown. You're always afraid of something that you're, you know, that you're about to embrace. You you keep on resisting change, yet you keep on making changes. Now. There is actually in your past life that you've sold out your, um, you know, your, uh, the other person that you're with, which is you met your first soulmate before the one that you will, before the one that you married. And I feel like uh, there was a promise, okay? Because the other person lives in another place or the other person lives in like a like a foreign land or another city and because of your distance you have you know withered away and this person is much younger than you or this person is just around your age okay but makes like enough money or just makes well, you know like a so and so money i don't feel like this person is rich and even though you know even though you've already planned of getting married when they get back or when they came back, I feel like they're um, they're working on the sawmill or mill. I'm, I'm only getting some mills and uh, a lot of wood, sawdust, and um, it looks like they're always wearing loose pants and suspenders and uh, always wearing that cap, okay? Um... Uh, I feel like it's the cap that you usually, you know, see in older people. So, I don't know what you call that hat, but, um... Uh... You've already planned of... Of, um, getting married, and he promised you that he will only try to save money, you know, for, uh, for your, uh, for your wedding. And, to, for you to buy a small house, a small land. Um... And, uh... I feel like both of you are Middle Easterns, or you came from the Middle East, or somewhere around that part, okay? Not necessarily in Egypt, but you were born in the Middle East, okay? So you have some Arabic blood, or you have some Arabic um, background. Now, your love life right now is being affected because of your past life karma. Now... After two years that you've been like riding back and forth, back and forth, and you already get bored <clears throat> and you've been impatient, so you feel like you can do something, you know, while you're doing, um, while you're waiting and while you are, um, it's like while you are trying to save up money both. And you're only working in a very small a shop or you're only working as a helper and you don't know how to fasten things up because you're starting to get bored 
and sorry, you're, ta you're starting to get bored and you want to be together. Now, there is a rich person who's been a very frequent client or customer of yours. And uh, every time that they buy something from your, either from your store, either from, you know, wherever you are, wherever you're working before. I feel like it's more of a, like a market. Because there is a merchandise that you sell and you used to help an old woman, you know, to stack some pieces or to stack some, some stuff. Every time that this person comes by and buys something from your store... And they always look, he always look at you and he always ask about you, which is every time that this person comes, you hide, okay? Or you pretend that you're doing something or you pretend that you're busy. And you've been thinking a lot about your, you know, your bow during that, that time. And you're growing a little bit impatient and uh, you really want to be with someone because you grew up alone and you were only raised by a stranger because they found you in the street okay and they don't even know who are your parents but all they know is that you um you were left uh, on the side and uh, they have adopted you and you were very um you know you're very thankful uh, that these people have cared for you but something inside of you feels like it's not really right or something something feels like you know, like, there's still something more that you want to know. Or there's something more that you want to feel and see. Because you don't even know if your parents are still around. You have siblings and stuff like that. You feel like the life that you have right now is not the life that you're supposed to be in. Like, you have always felt like this This world is not really where I am at. Physically, yes, I'm here. But spiritually, I know that I am in another place or another dimension. Something like that. It's like you always have that split vision. Okay? And you were gifted and uh, you're, you're very inventive. Okay? And because of that, people see you as a very odd individual or odd person. Because what you know before is a little bit different from what they are doing. So... They always look at you as you, either you're weird, you're out of this world, or you're crazy, okay? And because of that, whatever you do, whatever your interests are, you just thwart it, you just stop it because you're so afraid that people will just cast you away or will just keep you away or kick you out. And this is, this is what your foster parent have also advised you to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing. Otherwise, people will be kicking you out of town, okay? Or out of the city, sorry. Out of the gates. And every time that this happens, you feel like nobody cares for you. Nobody shows you interest. Nobody shows you any other love. Except for this person who's been working in another city and been saving, you know, um, sa saving penny or saving uh, money before, you know, for your, for your wedding. So that the TV will be together. And you have tried to keep your faith, but then you feel like life has always been unfair to you. And, you know, uh, you don't know why do you have to keep on waiting. You don't know why, do you, why are you born in this kind of life or in this kind of family or in this kind of situation. Until that there was a, a telegram or there was like a form of letter or there was like a form of news that you have received that the... Um, um, either it's the mining or the uh, the workplace that your bow that your fiance has been working had had an explosion or there was an accident, and you never heard from your bow because he was not even in the list of the survivors, but not even in the list of those people who who all who also died, and you have kept on waiting and waiting and waiting until that you already get tired and you feel so frustrated in your life until that this person in your you know in your um in your store have tried to pay attention to you cheered you up and you got close now after a few years and after a few moments uh, sorry after a few a uh, few months okay um you have grown uh what do you call this you have grown so um fond Okay, of this person that even though they're very, very, they're older than you, okay, but they can provide, they have, uh, you know, they have herds of animals, whatever it is, and they have their own house, 
um, they can definitely, you know, uh, support you. They don't really have to save money just to have something. Because uh, at that time, this that person's lifestyle is already well off or considered as well off. So, you you accept their offer, their proposal, you get married. And then when you already have a child, that is the time that this person that you have promised to marry and that you thought is already dead just resurfaced out of nowhere and they have you know they've been they've been searching and looking for you something happened to them during the accident and then when they found out who they really are looks like they uh, they found an amnesia that's the only time that they uh, remembered that they have a promise to fulfill to you and when they uh, you know when they uh, when he got back into his own self and he remembered everything he knows that he promised you that he'll be saving money so that the two of you will get back together and uh, get married have your own family and uh, buy a small land so they've worked and saved money but then when they found you you were already married and already have your own child and not to mention that you were also taking care of the you know of the kids of your husband from another woman so and they found you and then you uh you know uh it was well, when you get reunited it's like uh, it's a very painful reunion it's a very painful revelation because you thought that this person is already long dead and this person thought that you're uh, that you're still waiting for them or that you have waited for them so you have part ways with so much bitterness in your heart and heaviness and you feel so guilty of everything uh you've been crying since that day and you never stopped regretting or resenting that you should have been a little bit more impatient and you should have been a little bit more contented to believe and have a stronger faith that this person will still come back to you and will still come and find you because in the list that they have provided it's uh, you know his name wasn't there and in the list who survived or uh, you know that's um that uh, or her already died or survived they you know his name wasn't there so it means that they're still you know they're still at large and so you have regretted so much and right after that your relationship with the older man already got so uh, cold and uh, you know dry and dreary and um your husband at that point became alcoholic okay because they found out that you have met your you know your former fiance and obviously you know uh, they cannot really accept the fact that you're still in love with a with a person from the past so the rest of your life you have well you have lived until the age of 60 until that you have uh, you know that you've uh, incurred some illness that at that point it was a very simple uh, you know illness but there's no cure yet and you have decided to you know not to get well since that your child with the other person or with your husband is already grown up so you just decided to to rest okay and uh, close down your heart now so it's more of a you know like a there's an unfinished business there now in your second lifetime again you another issues with your father okay or you're very close to your father and you lived in a farm you're very spiritual or you came from a very spiritual and uh, sacrilegious family and uh, it seems like well, you when you've grown you work for the government or you work for the um, near the law enforcement you were not really a troubled child but you always have some problems accomplishing things and uh and during the civil war right after you having a baby you have joined the war okay and this is where you have Yeah, you were actually cut off from your f own family. And, uh... 
You have lived a very difficult life. You traveled and veered so far because of the war, you know, and um, there's a promise that you need to fulfill or that you did not really made it because of your situation before. You're a very religious person and you have high regards to, you know, to the creator, to God. And it's part of this, you know, that uh, having some high intuition or very strong instinct, you never really made it back because it took you some time to, you know, to travel back and uh, especially the, during the time there was like an ongoing war, okay? And this was during the uh, between 1100s and 1400s. And um, you fell in love with somebody who is of a medical practitioner or like a doctor. And uh, you have started a new life altogether. Okay? So, and you never really made it back. You just left your child to your to your parents and decided to because you're the only pr you're the only child, okay? And your father's very strict, and you just want to help out to your family. You want to run away, you want to get away, and uh, you want to pursue your own dreams. And so, by the time he got stuck with your mission and you got stuck with your job, or with your volunteering, and you never really made it back. And you just decided that, you know, your your parents will take care of your baby or your child. And you just, you know, you just started another life altogether. And until the time comes that you got imprisoned and you were, uh, you were caught by your, uh, you know, by your enemies. And you have served your life, you know, the rest of your life there. That even though... You know, even though that you know that the, you have a lot of things that you've been regretting and you should have gone back home, you just decided to stay. And this is the reason why your your enemies have, um, have caught you and sent you to prison. But you have wrote down all of your adventures, your life, your experiences and everything else. And you have shared your wisdom to, you know, to other people and your words have, have spread all throughout to other people other prisoners or other you know because the person who got your book when uh, he got out of the prison he um, I'm not sure how they can make copy of your work but they have spread it and they've read it into you know in, they've read it into other people so they've learned from your experiences as well okay but you have died inside the uh, the inside the um, imprisonment and uh, you only have one wish but to see your child again which you never did so right now your main lesson is that uh, you need to be a little bit more patient and when you feel like life is being tough learn how to wait learn how to you know um, wait for the right time instead of trying and trying and trying when you feel like you're be when you feel like you're getting bored with something when you feel like something's not really transpiring or you feel like it's not really working out working out in your favor then you will just keep on doing another thing another thing another thing and another thing so it's like you keep on starting and starting and starting and no finishing okay and this is what actually happened to you and when you make a promise to somebody learn how to fulfill it and learn how to honor your words okay otherwise you would just get stuck and uh, when things get rough or when things get tough you know you just need to look back on those people who uh, cares for you and who loves you and do not escape from them or do not run away from them just because of your own mission or just because of your own fulfillment sometimes we also have some obligations to other people Okay, so if you're having a hard time right now being in a relationship and you feel like there's always someone, you know, that you want to wait for and then they're just going to go, they're just going to go away and then you will be meeting someone else who will be paying attention to you and then you feel like, oh, okay, I can settle with this, you know, and then unfortunately the person 
you can't feel the same way or you can't feel the same love because deep inside of you you know that your heart only belongs to one and only okay and if ever that they say that they're gonna come back when things are really meant to be it is really meant to be and the universe is the one who will be finding a way on how the two of you can get reunited even if things seem so impossible okay so you also need to learn how to forgive get over your trust issues and learn how to be trusted because you're you know sometimes you're too deceptive and too devious don't deceive your soulmate because otherwise you will get lost and you will be losing your way especially for the next seven years it's gonna take some time for you to find your way back again or for you to find yourself again and when you already have some children or, or when you already have a child learn how to take care of them and learn how to look after them because you never you know experienced how it is to grow up in your own family or you never really experienced it how to grow up um, under the care of your own parents in your first life okay so anyway that's it for you for this retrograde sagittarius and if you wanted to talk to me live at the phone and live at the calls or if you want to have this kind of reading just go and visit me at my website at sophieangel.net blessings to you